Today I'm at Yanagawa City, Fukuoka Prefecture, known as the Japanese City of Water. Hi, Michelle. Today we'll meet a Takumiyo innovator who will explain to us how they make the very fine blades they use to cut delicate materials such as liquid crystal films for cell phones and car engine parts. Let's go meet him. Hello, I'm Michelle. Welcome, I'm Motoki. Today's Takumi is Toshihiko Motoki. He showed us the special blade right away. The one to the left is an ordinary blade, whereas the one to the right is that of the Takumi. Although they look alike. So this is the normal one? Yes, you can buy that blade anywhere. It's hard to cut. The blade gets stuck. There we go. And this is our blade. Wow, it's so easy. It requires no effort to cut. This blade has a much cleaner cut. Comparing the cut surface of the urethane. The cut surface created by the Takumi's blade is smoother. Why does the Takumi's blade cut so well? The secret behind it is its edge. Even though the edge of a blade may look sharp, when magnified, it's actually blunt. The Takumi, however, sharpened the edge of the blade down to the scale of nanometers. And that's why my business card can be sliced vertically. Like this. The tip of the Takumi's blade is only 20 nanometers wide. This is one-tenth of a typical blade. The card was thinly sliced open like a book. The blade's capabilities go further. Here, the blade is cutting... a human hair. The blade can vertically split it in three with ease. Why is there so much difference in sharpness? The difference is at the tip of the blade. It's the shape and the sharpness at the edge. The Takumi's blade tip is thoroughly sharpened, and it also has a special shape. But further details, however, are trade secrets. Upon creating the blade, the Takumi also carefully chose its material. He selected the rigid alloy containing tungsten, which made the blade dozens of times more durable than conventional ones. The blade is so hard, it's sharpened using a diamond. Along with the blade itself, the Takumi pays close attention to the subject it is cutting. These are cross-sections of films cut with blades with different shapes. The film to the left was cut with a single bevel blade, whereas that to the right was cut with a double bevel one. Changing the shape of the blade can make a big difference. The Takumi then adjusted the angles of the double bevel blades to create the finest blade tip to cut films. The Takumi's blades are therefore custom made to suit a certain use. The price can be 20 times more expensive than an ordinary blade. Regardless, the Takumi's blade is widely popular. The reason can be observed from the cross-section of the film. On the left, cracks can be seen in the cross-section of a cut using a normal blade. When cutting into a stack of films with a normal blade, you can see that the films are crushed. In contrast, the Takumi's blade sliced both materials in a fine manner. This makes post-processing unnecessary, which according to the Takumi, is the biggest appeal of his blade. With his blade, the Takumi is now aiming to cut into a new field. 
I want to apply the technology of blade manufacturing to the field of medicine, like cutting cells and DNA. My next goal is to save and improve people's lives. And look at this. He split mm. my business card in two. Thank you. Really? You know, I couldn't believe it when I saw this happening. The tip of the blade must be extremely thin and sharp. It's really impressive. I mean, you'd think that the paper would be a little crumpled or something, but it's a very, very clean cut. That's right. He's very particular about making a clean cut. And I was impressed when he said he sells quality cutting rather than blades. And apparently, he's now looking into making medical use blades. That's good. Human cells are microscopic, so if his blades are sharpened down to the nano level, I'm sure they'll be very useful for medical treatments. I can't wait to see where this leads. It's the cutting edge of cutting edges, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Gathright, what are your thoughts about today's topic? Well, of course, I think we'll start to see more and more self-driving cars and humanoid robots around us. And they need to see us too, right? Mm -hmm. In reality, 3D imaging is changing our lives and the world right now. Even in my field of bioagricultural science, it's being used for forest fire management, environmental assessments, and animal biodiversity programs and more. The more precise and more accurate it becomes, the greater the applications it will have in our daily lives. And that is what I think is really exciting. We'll see. And the machines will too. And that's all for this week's Science View. Thank you for joining us. And see you all again next time. <laughs>